of that child and pervert his destiny and interject and introduce many variables into his life that makes it impossible for him or her to fulfill divine agenda. How did I know? The Bible says in the book of Revelations that there was a sign in heaven and a woman gave birth. The Bible says that immediately that woman gave birth, that the dragon, the Satan, went after the woman, went after the seed of the woman to consume it. But there was a hand from heaven that rescued the seed of the woman and also rescued the woman. I decree tonight, by the function of this anointing, there will be a mighty hand from heaven that will rescue your life from satanic perversion. I cannot hear your amen. I said there will be an outstretched arm of the Lord to pull you out and rescue you from every satanic perversion in your life. In the name of Jesus. Satan perverts destiny. Satan introduces variables into destiny that makes it impossible for that destiny to attain the full measure of the status of God for his life. I want you to pay attention tonight. There's an unction I've been feeling. And God spoke to me. He said, be in the whole day. My family knows I did not leave my room till this evening. I was locked in. Because there was an expectation. And God spoke to me profusely. That tonight, destinies that have been altered are changing back to their original plan. I cannot hear your amen. I said, destiny that has been altered. Destiny that has been perverted. A course of life that has taken a tangent dimension. I said there is a restoration tonight. I said there is an unction tonight. From tonight, by the reason of this anointing, you will begin to function according to the blueprint for your life. I cannot hear your amen. Tonight, expectation is everything. And if you cannot connect to this unction, it will be as though you have wasted. Because I believe tonight's encounter is a destiny encounter for somebody. An encounter that you will have that you should not let go. It is such an encounter that Jacob had when the angels of the Lord came. He said, he held on to the angel. He said, this encounter will not pass me by. Today, every perversion in my life must be realized and be reuttered. Jacob was a man that God in the womb pronounced favor upon his life. He said, Jacob, I love. He was one ordained for the dynasty of Abraham. The covenant of Abraham. But Satan perverted his destiny. He, began, he became a man that was running from pillar to post. A man that had oil on his head. Everywhere he went, they knew that he carried oil. But yet, that oil, instead of functioning as one that God has ordained, he started functioning as a slave. A perversion. A diversion of life. And Laban said, I knew that something is on your head. Since you entered my house, my prosperity has increased. I want to declare over somebody here tonight. The anointing of God upon your head, you have been using it to serve tables. You have been using it in a slave camp. But tonight, you are coming out. I said, the unction is bringing about your release. Do you know what it means to carry oil? Joseph carried oil on his head. But the enemy perverted his course. He was a, oh my God. When he was in Potiphar's house, because of the anointing, he became the head of slaves. He was in prison. He became head of prisoners. What, what kind of manifestation is that? Somebody that was destined to sit on a throne. Devil was now put, giving him small, small thrones. Don't forget, in the beginning of his life, he had a revelation of an unction on his life. What did he say to his father? He said, I saw the star and the moon and every sun bind out to me. He knew that I carried oil. But that oil, he was using it to serve in Potiphar's house. That was why the wife was trying to mess up his life. He was using it to serve in prison. I don't care where you are serving, where the enemy has put your teeth on the grind. By the reason of this unction, you are liberated tonight. I said, by the reason of this unction, you are delivered. Bible says, by the reason of the anointing, every yoke shall be broken. Every yoke of servitude in your life, every yoke of slavery in your life, 
the man of God came asking you to pray against the spirit of frustration that the enemy has attached to your destiny. I decree by this anointing that you'll be broken. I said that you'll be broken. I cannot hear your amen. The anointing for power is a release of unction to function in life according to God's templates and blueprints for your life. Number two, the anointing for power is an enablement to make impact and to be relevant in this life. Eternity. I'm telling you this character of this anointing so that I can steer you up onto something that you should desire. So when we are praying, you may do it. I, I solicit that you be patient tonight. If God willing, God said we should end the program tonight, I think it will wear deserving. But I want you to take this and take this bull by the horn and advance in such a way that nothing is able to hinder or stop you from fulfilling destiny this year. It's not destiny for us as a ministry that includes you is that you should expand. That is, you break boundaries and barriers. You break through obstacles. You rise above limitation. And that must be your experience. That is your destiny. And when we are talking about expansion, we are talking about all on expansion. Spirit, soul, and body. All that pertain to this life and godliness. That is your destiny. And you should not bargain for anything less. You should not expect anything less. That is why starting at the beginning of the year, he said, I want to release oil so that men can fulfill their destiny. The character of the anointing for power is a release of a divine ability to make a life impactful and relevant. And I want you to know that the degree of the manifestation of your relevance is a function of the level of the anointing in your life. How relevant you are is a function of how this anointing that empowers a man has made you indispensable to men. By the anointing on the head of Joseph, Pharaoh declared, who amongst men can be like this man in whom the wisdom of God dwells in fullness? Who amongst men? And the greater you understand this dimension of the anointing, the higher you will flow and you will grow in it. By the revelation I caught with God today, I said to myself, this will be the least I will ever be. And you can quote me by the end of this year in this church, this is going to be the least we will ever be. Acts chapter 10 verse 38 how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with Holy Ghost and with power and he went about doing good and delivering those that were oppressed and possessed of the devil because God was with him. Jesus before he was anointed was called Jesus of Nazareth. But when he was anointed he seems to be Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth was a perversion in his life. God, the ordination of God was not him to be called Jesus of Nazareth. He was supposed to be called Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. People were looking for the Messiah. But because the anointing has not come upon him, they saw him as Jesus the carpenter from Nazareth. But when he was anointed, in the book of Matthew that you read, the Bible says, I have opened, and a spirit came upon him like a dove. That is a descent of the anointing. And when Peter will see him in the next chapter, he went to Andrew, and Andrew went to Peter. He said, come, we have seen what? The Messiah. A change of identity. A change of narration. There's somebody here, the narrative of your life is changing tonight. I said, the narrative of your life is changing tonight. I don't care whatever name they've called you. But by the reason of this anointing, your true purpose and your true identity will manifest. And men will change the name with which they call you. 
in the name of Jesus. Perhaps you are here, you are barren. And they've been calling you, oh, that barren woman, from tonight, because of this anointing, power will enter you and you will conceive. And your name will change. In the name of Jesus. Are you with me tonight? A higher anointing will produce a higher potential. The character of this anointing makes serving God easy. And this was what struck me. And my perspective and orientation about the disposition of people shifted. Because I've been wondering up before now, how can somebody be so cold and call himself a Christian? How can somebody be convenient and comfortable for a whole year without preaching the gospel to one soul? For me, it's a contradiction of your nature and of your character. How can you say you are a child of God and you are praying and you are fasting and you are doing everything and yet there is no fruit of your nature that you are present to God? Whose employer will keep an employee that is irresponsible? Many of us will live so irresponsibly as a child of God. And I began to wonder what could be responsible until the Holy Spirit opened my eyes tonight. He said they lack the anointing for service. This anointing, this power, makes serving the Lord very easy. I decided going forward, I won't push anybody to serve. Or rather, to ensure parted by the anointing first. Jesus did not demand service from the disciples until there was a release of what? Power to serve. There you shall receive power when Holy Ghost comes upon you and you will be able to be my witness. Tonight, we receive power for service. I said you will receive power for service. This anointing is having easy. Without the anointing, becomes annoying. Serving, trying to serve. That's why many of us take offense. You are in the choir. So the choir master said, you come late for service. And all you say, eh, who service help? And you left church. You lack the anointing. That is why you are annoying. Service without anointing is what? Annoying. So, head of department... Whenever somebody gets annoyed at service, just know that they are not what? Annoyed. They like, go and carry four liters and put their head. Serving without anointing is a deadly body. It's a deadly body. How do I know? Isaiah chapter 40 verse 30. Look at what it says. He says, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fail. The youth speaks of people that are at the full prime of strength. He said, when as young, as energetic as they are, when they try to serve without the anointing, he said they will be weary. He said, young men that are just rising, he said they will faint. But this verse, he said, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength where they're supposed to be walking. He said they shall mount up with wings as eagles. He said they shall run, they shall not be weary. They shall walk, they shall not faint. Say the anointing. Say the anointing. Number four, character of this anointing is that it unveils the hidden gifts and potentials of a man. Until the dove descended on Jesus, Jesus was not revealed. The potentials of Jesus were not revealed. Until the anointing came upon him, it was when he said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. For 30 years, Jesus was hidden because anointing was yet to manifest on him. I don't know where you are, in whatever obscure position that life has placed you. I decree by this anointing, you are coming forth to relevance. And then you are coming out to become relevant. You are coming out to become relevant. When this anointing came upon Christ, 
he attracted the disciples. People flocked around him. And the Bible says that his fame went far and abroad. Many of you have been submitting application letters everywhere. And in fact, the number of application letters submitted is more than four reams of paper. And nobody has called you. But by this unction tonight, even where you have not submitted application, there will be recommendation. Where your feet has not been, where your mouth has not been heard, where your voice has not been heard, and then by this anointing, you become relevant and indispensable. Many of us, our life is like a, condu a bus conductor. All we are shouting is, help me, help me, help me, agege, agege, agege. And nobody is hearing you. But by this anointing, even the unspoken words within your heart will be loud in the ears of those that will favor you. Will be loud in the ears of your destiny helpers. Meshiphobet, the son of Saul, was just a lame, a crippled person. But because of the anointing of God upon the head of his father, the Bible says that the gift and the calling of God are without repentance. Because of the anointing of God upon his father, the king just sat down one day. He said, who is in the house of Saul that I can favor? Do a research for me. There's somebody here, somebody is doing a research to spot you, to choose you, to select you, to look for you in the name of Jesus. He said, who can I favor? Who can I bring up to this height and sit with me at my table? And they said there was nobody except one man that said there was a crippled man. You may feel you are crippled, but it's your season to sit at the table with kings. And then your season to sit at the table with kings in the name of Jesus. And they brought mercy for bed. So unworthy he came to the king. And the king said, from today, you will eat from my table. Notwithstanding your qualification. Favor has qualified you. Who am I speaking to tonight? I said, favor has qualified you. I said, favor has qualified you. I said, favor has qualified you. If you believe, say, I believe. If you are the one, say, I receive. In the name of Jesus. This anointing qualifies the relevance of a man. This anointing locates a man wherever he could be, even at the back side. David was such a man that was gone and forgotten. The Bible says that Paul came to anoint him. Because that anointing was designed for him. They brought seven men, seven men. And in fact, the prophet was even carried away by the stature of those men. He said, this is the one the Lord wants to anoint. But God said, I have not seen them. As I'm feeling disappointed, how can a father forget that he has a son? How can a mother a mother was here when they were parading seven sons and they asked, Can they, there is no more sons? And the mother did not cry that there is a David somewhere. I don't know where that is forgotten. But tonight, by the reason of this anointing, you will be located for lifting. I said, You will be located for lifting. And they went to call David. And that anointing was poured on his head. And from that time, David was no longer in obscurity. It became relevant for every engagement. It became relevant for every purpose. I have amplified all of these things so that you can convert this anointing. And lastly, on the character of the anointing, before I move into how to activate and operate the anointing, and the communion and the uh, we're going to take tonight will be a channel for activation upon some. As you are taking it, a force of the spirit be, be, be full of it. Something will happen in this place. This place will quake. Because it's something is an ordinance from God to trigger an effect. So, lastly, on the character of this anointing, that this anointing transforms a life. The anointing for power is a power is a transformer. Oh, oh my God! What did I say? It is. A transformer. 
Please, who knows a transformer here? You have seen a transformer before. Let me see it. Can you move close to a transformer? If you are hungry with me, can you go and hug a transformer? Anointing is a transformer. If one demon has been messing up with your life, by the time the anointing comes upon you, you become untouchable. Ask me, how did I know? Peter, John, and all the brothers were ordinary fishermen. But after the book of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, and the Pharisees, they thought that they were ordinary fishermen, saw them afterwards. They said when they saw the courage, the power and the boldness with which they are now living life, they knew that they have been with what? Jesus. They saw something unusual. He said, we knew them to be unschooled men. How come they came about this? Do you know that they wanted to intimidate them? They could not. They said they wanted to jail them. One of them said, if you jail these people, you will come do more harm than good. Let us just leave them. You don't hug a trans even if you are angry with it. Let's look for a way to disconnect the power first. Before. And what did they do? They scared them. But the more they scared them, how can you scare a transformer? By the power that you receive tonight through communion, that this power that transforms the life of a man will rest upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus. How do you activate anointing for power? One thing I forgot to mention is that this anointing is not generic. This anointing for power is not meant for everybody. It's only meant for some few people that can come up to a certain understanding or that can be given the privilege of vision for their destiny are ready to connect to it. The first key that activates your power is dedication. dedication. Say dedication. Dedication to serve by the reason of revelation. Paul was speaking in the book of Acts of the Apostles when he stood before Festus and Agrippa. He said, oh King Agrippa, ever since this Story, I told you about my encounter with your anointing. It became a reality in my life. He said, I was not disobedient anymore to what? To the heavenly vision. If you will walk in the fullness of this anointing for power, you need to come to a point of vision that this life is dedicated for the purpose for which it is created. Most of us have an understanding of the purpose of our creation. But something else is what we are dedicated to. Why do you think after eight days, even if you are a Shango worshiper, they will carry a baby to dedicate to something? Dedication is fundamental. And there's somebody here you were dedicated to an evil thing. But by this anointing, that situation of your life is altered and is changing. Whatever I do before which you have been dedicating, tonight your life will be dedicated to Jesus. Dedication means you are willing to commit yourself and invest yourself into the purpose for which you are created. Dedication is an act of setting apart or consecrating yourself to God for the use for which he created you. If this anointing will function, my wife is here to testify ever since we got married and the purpose for our marriage was because of the purpose for which God created us. We have never been stranded. I always say it here. I have never been stranded. I have never and I will never be. Not because I am boasting but because I have dedicated myself to God's purpose and is committed to ensure that I am not stranded. A man that is dedicated to the cause of God for his life will not run out of provision that will power his life. Am 
married a very beautiful man, very submissive, God fearing woman. It was the dedication of my life to God's cause that connected me to this kind of person. If I was not committed, I would have just married one randy woman somewhere. By now, you have been reading on newspaper a pastor divorced after so so and so so years. Look at all those, those marriages that are breaking. They are either that they, they, they got married after they discover purpose. You cannot be at the center of God's purpose for your life and meet that critical point of your life and miss it. Eh? You cannot. And that concerns every area of your life. You are dedicated to God's cause. Even your career will be chosen for you. I read banking and finance in school. But because I was the God's, I heard God clearly. He said, it is through IT you will feed and fulfill ministry. He told me in black and white. Some of you that have read my journal, you will have seen it there. Dedication comes with direction. Comes with precision of instruction. You cannot miss it. When the apostles dedicated themselves for the cause of their destiny as revealed by God. Can you see they were fishermen? But even in an oxymoric sense, what is oxymoric? In contradictory, what is contradictory? In, in, in ways that does not seem to align. They were fishers, fishermen, but their destiny was fishermen in true true. They were supposed to be fishing men and not fishing fish. But Satan perverted a destiny supposed to be fishing men to be fishing fish. That was why they were frustrated. When Jesus met them, they were at the brink of frustration because they are not catching what they're supposed to be catching. And Jesus says that now henceforth, you will fish men. They were supposed to be fishermen indeed. No fisher fish. In heaven, their destiny was this is a fisherman. And what you are doing is not disconnected. Your interest, your passion is not disconnected from your purpose. That's what you must understand about purpose. But the truth of the matter is that even what you are doing, maybe be, may be, you may be doing it in a wrong form or in a wrong location. Many people are singers today. Look at uh, Whitney Houston and Cece Winers. They were both in the choir. But one of them, Satan amplified the same thing that God has ordained for her lifting. And that was why when she was dying, about to die, she sang a song, I looked to you, go and, go and listen to the song. That was one of my favorite. I listened to her. I listened to her to pity that destiny. Some night ago, I just sat down. You will be shocked if you enter my study room. I listened to like 10 with Disney song. What was I listening to? I cry. Her life was dead. Every of our song, every of our inspiration was inspired by frustration. May your life not be inspired by frustration. Amen. Go and look at every of our songs. Go and quote me. But this is Sissy Winers. This is fire. She's still alive today. The death note with the thing, she committed suicide. Her daughter committed. They all died the same way, the same pattern. Inside the bathtub. Whatever she might have made has counted for nothing. But look at Sissy Winers. She's still affecting life, imparting life to today. You may not know her because you are not born again. But everyone knows her. How many of us know Sissy Winers here? But how many of you know the band here? May God forgive you. When the woman of God was in the place and worship, now, nah, what is the name of this uh, drug addict that used to dance like this? Naramali. That's what people are dancing. But dance like Ron Kenoli, they don't know. Dance like Dali Sheikh, they don't know. Your destiny is on perversion. May God, let God forgive me. Say dedication. A life that will function by this anointing is such a life that is dedicated to God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21. The Bible says that in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also wood and clay, some for honor, some unto dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, 
it will be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and useful for the prepared for every good work. The word sanctify is a key word I want us to see there. This anointing for power sanctifies you for good works. Are you understand what I'm saying? The Bible says in the book of Corinthians that the quality of your work will be tested in the fire. Will be tested in the fire. If your work is not good as sanctified by the anointing, the Bible says that it will be consumed and you will forfeit everything. With the Houston, like I mentioned, sold millions of albums. Had millions of fans. If I look at the Facebook, her Facebook page, she has over 50 million fans. But the quality of her work when tested in heaven, what do you think will be the end of it? Eh? You can judge our work even now. But you may have just 10 fans and 10 likes. But those 10 are guaranteed candidates for eternity. When they test it, what do you think the quality of your work will be? Number two key. That activate this anointing is what I call incubation. Say incubation. Incubation. The first is dedication. When you are dedicated yourself for service, many of us come and serve God in church. See how scanty we are. It is my anointing that I brought this few. Come and join your anointing. If all of us join anointing with this anointing, which I know you have, yours might even be greater than mine. mine. And join together. What do you think will happen? The Bible says that one shall chase a thousand. Two shall what? Put ten thousand to price. But we, don't, we are not dedicated. The second key is incubation. I'm going to round up in 10 minutes so that we can go into communion. Incubation. That is waiting to be casted and to be forged by the hand of God. That is incubation. When a sperm meets the egg of a woman in a container called the womb, what happens there? The egg gets incubated for nine months. So that by the time the mother is batting the egg, she's not batting something around that can be cooked inside pot and used for bread. She gives back to something that we call a bouncing baby. Please, is egg, can egg bounce? If you throw egg up, will it bounce? Eh? But a baby bounces, right? If your life must bounce, for people, for attraction, you must allow it to be incubated. You must learn to stay and to tarry. And this incubation is not a dash. It's not a one-time thing. It is a continuous engagement with God. Every night, you incubate yourself in God and with God in the place of fellowship and communion. And you come out as a brandished instrument of power. At one point, Moses was incubated in the presence of God for 40 days. The Bible says that when he came back and he came down, they could not look at his face. People were using veil to cover their face to talk to Moses. Say power. You are so incubated in the morning and you enter that office and your boss is saying that, Sister Christine, please, what are we talking? She cannot look straight in your face. Talkers of plotting harm against you. Say incubation. Say he that dwells in the secret place of the Mostar shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That wicked neighbor, you wake up in the morning, coming out from an incubator, fresh and sweet to be old. And he's now saying, I want to do you harm. And one fire will not descend and consume. Fear a man that is incubated by God. And if you want to be feared in this life, get into the place of incubation. Jesus warned his disciples in the book of Acts chapter 1, I think verse 5. He said, don't go out. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. It would have been suicidal for them to venture out to service without tarrying ye in Jerusalem. And they tarried. Excuse me, how 
preach a message. The entire message that Peter preached is in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. And one day, 3,000 men got converted. And you know the uh, irony of the whole matter? They were doing baptism for 3,000 men in one day. Excuse me. How? We, where, where is the water? But when a man gets incubated by God, he provokes this dimension of anointing for power. Incubate yourself in God's quiver daily for intensive release of power. Isaiah 40 verse 31, I've read it before. It said, they that wait in the place of incubation shall what? Renew their strength. And they shall be given wings. They shall be given strength to run and to mount and not faint. Lastly, the third key that activates an anointing for power, sacrifice. Say sacrifice. Spiritual sacrifice. And this sacrifice speaks to the fact of expediency and not the fact of lawful. I will explain. This sacrifice we are talking about is not a function of whether things are right or wrong. You are looking for the benefits in every matter. I will explain. It is lawful to eat three square meal a day. The day you wake up and you chose to eat three square meal, it is natural and it is lawful. But for somebody that wants to carry power, it is not expedient. Imagine before I step into this place to minister, I've eaten two fufu and five pounded yam. Will I be able to speak the way I'm speaking? Or I've taken five bottles of gouda and two star. The only way I will be having is that mad boy there. How can a man want to perform and all he will be shouting is wala wala wala? He's not a madman. Current, am I not? There was a particular man that took a flight, was going overseas. And as he sat in his first class cabin, the, one of the hostess in the airplane brought him an alcohol. And they asked him to drink. I think it was Billy Graham, that great evangelist. He said he was not drinking. The waitress said, ah, You don't drink? What's wrong with you? He said, No problem. Please, can you take it? He took the glass. He said, Take it. Go and give it to the pilot to drink. And the woman said, The pilot can't drink. He said, why? He said, because he's the one that is piloting. All of us will crash. He said, so also, if I drink, I will crash. Say, expediency. It is lawful to drink alcohol. It is lawful to drink. But if you are on a certain course, you can't drink it. Paul said, all things are lawful for me. But all things are what? Expedient. Not all things are lawful for me. Therefore, I will not be mastered by anything. Somebody asked me a question. I think it was in Burundi. I think it was Ghana or Burundi. We were watching and we were looking at something. And a bishop claimed to have two or three wives. In fact, he was even play, uh, advocating that it is good to have many wives. By the scripture, quoting Abraham. And they asked me, and the guy was shocked. He said, is he a sin to marry two wives? I said, no, it's not a sin. He said, I can choose to have ten wives. The only thing that is an issue is that you cannot represent God. You cannot stand in a place and say, I am standing for God. You disqualified yourself for service. And somebody asked me, if Mary... The mother of Jesus, God this virgin, before the angel came, excuse me, will she still marry? Will she still be the mother of Jesus? She can be, now she has been written. 
that she will conceive and bring back to a son. Her lost virginity will have disqualified her from becoming the mother of Jesus. There are many things that we are disqualifying ourselves from. We want to function on the capacity, but what we cannot sacrifice is defiling us. It's becoming an issue on our journey. There are many things I'm permitted to do as a pastor. If you see me doing them, I have not seen. But I'm only disqualifying myself from operating at the level of power that God has ordained for me. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 23, it says, All things are not for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edifies me. Not all things can build you up. And I speak to young people here. Is it good? Is it a good thing to be dating? I won't say dating is wrong, is a need, is an emotional need. But it's not good for you as a child of God. It will pervert your destiny. Don't open a cup of emotion when you have no capacity to contain it. Forget the issue of sin or no sin. That is at the baby level. But somebody that wants to walk in a dimension of power and anointing does not contemplate sin. It looks like it's beneficial to where I'm going. Let me ask you this question. Excuse me. You want to win an Olympic gold for 100 meters? Right? Please, will you wear Agbada to run the race? Is it wrong to wear Agbada to field? A spectator can wear Agbada, but a, compet a competitor, is it competitor they call it, cannot wear Agbada to run. Excuse me, you want to win the Olympic and you are running. What would the Agbada be doing for you? There are many things you are involved with that is the re only reason why you have not become God's destiny, God's purpose for your life. You are in Agbada. When you are supposed to be wearing tight. A lady, a sprinter, that wants to do high jump. Will she wear high heel? Because her destiny is high jump. She should not wear high heel. Is it not high and high? Say experience. Sacrifice. If this year, you will carry the anointing that will make you fulfill God's purpose. Trim your feathers. Say trim your feathers. Say trim down. Lose weight. Lose weight. I'm not talking about flesh. Drop baggages. You may have to break your relationships from relationships in your life. You may have to change your circle of friends. Excuse me, to go up in this anointing, you need to learn how to give up. Say to your neighbor, give up to go up. Say to another, give up to go up. I gave us some certain things that brought tears from my eyes. I remember the lady I was supposed to marry. Fine girl. But the day I visited her, and the mother, we sat down. And she looked at me, sir, Tony, why are you this wretched? Because the farm boy she knew on campus has carried Jesus on his head. And I look at myself that day. The what is the name of that uh, son that we used to wear then? Is it keto? They call it. If you have not worn keto, you are born yesterday. The side of my keto was like this. She was this shoe was really kitted. And the trouser I wore was folded like this. I used bear to carry because they gave me, they call it bambe. You know bambe trouser? That it is bear you used to hold it to the waist. The waist is like this. And as you are walking, you know that thing can disgrace you. One of the sides that the bear carried it have removed like there is one hole here. I don't blame her. Even my, if my daughter brought somebody over, I would say, have you prayed? She looked at me. She said, what has gone from boy on campus with patting and Jerry, is it correct? Ah, sporting wave. That's what we used to do in those days. Sporting waves. Not uh, that, that, that this brought you see. Very fine, responsible sporting wave. Not the one that will make me look like somebody else. 
very coyly. If I went myself, but this nobody will not do bololo. And hunger has wired me that there is control in my head. You can see the map of Africa on my head. Oh my God. And she looked at me. Kai, Kai, Kai. I cannot. And I remember in a way. Said, so I'm going to lose her like this. Everybody knew, even while we were on campus, that these people are destined together. But I said, no. This person cannot be suitable for me. Unfortunately, she married an Avaj. Why? I sacrificed. And thank God I did. I will have missed a very vital component of my destiny. Somebody that was crafted for me from the foundation of the art. Somebody that without the art, I'm not complete. I gave up to grab her where she was. I plucked her. Say sacrifice. Say sacrifice. Some of us here, because we are so Canada is the only thing we hear this night. There is nothing more we will understand. Bless your feet, everybody. Begin to talk to God tonight. Say, Father, I want this power. I want this power. Anoint me with this power. I want my life to be relevant. I want to be useful. I want to be a vessel unto honor. I don't want to be a useless vessel. I don't want to live this life in vain. I don't want to live this life meaningless. I don't want to roam this life aimless. I don't want to go about this life uh, without meaning. I don't want to waste my life. I don't want to waste my life. Uh, unleash your power. Release your heart. Make my life relevant. Make my life meaningful. Make my life count for something. That should be your prayer. Say, Father, I want my life to be useful and usable. Put in me that unction that makes me it's an object of honor in this generation. I want my life to count for many. Now and into that thing, that should be your prayer. There is a release of that unction here tonight. There are some of you that your status is changing because of this unction. There are some of you that the narration of your life is changing. There are some of you by this encounter, something about your destiny is changing. Oh, there are some of you that it is this oil that will connect you to that partner, to that person that will change your destiny. This anointing will bring recommendation. This anointing will bring you into limelight. Feel my cup, Lord. Ah, lift it up, Lord. God, man, quench this thirsty of my soul. Bread of heaven, feel me till I want no more. Feel my cup, feel it, Lord, and make me feel my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Look, can you bring the bread forward? Come and quench the rest of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it all and make me whole. Anointing, fall on me. Anointing, fall on me. Let the power.